Beloved, are you seeking profound teachings from the Bible that will deepen your understanding of Christ and nurture your spiritual growth? Look no further. The Grace Life Coming Podcast is here to guide you on a transformative journey. Join us as we explore a wide range of subjects, including the finished work of Christ, the knowledge of the Holy Spirit, the words and life of Jesus, the miracles of Jesus, and so much more. Our podcast offers simple yet profound teachings that will empower you to grow and mature in the faith. The Grace Life Kobe podcast will help you engage, learn, and connect. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to grow in your faith and connect with others who share your passion for Christ. Grace Life Kobe podcast, raising men to completeness in Christ. Subscribe and connect with us today and embark on a life-changing adventure. Grace to you, Jesus is Lord. Beloved, we are glad to have you listening again to simple yet profound teachings from God's Word. Sit back and be blessed throughout this session. God bless you. Hallelujah to Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord for another opportunity God has given unto us to continue with this um, family and home series. This makes it a fourth episode and we give God all the glory and praise. Amen. Thank you for listening thus far. And we believe that you have been richly blessed in the past episodes. Greater things ahead for us in Jesus' name. Amen. To begin this session, let's have a word of prayer. Uh, Pastor Chimdi, please post a word of prayer as we begin. Heavenly Father, we bless and appreciate you. We give you glory and praise. We give you honor and thanksgiving. We thank you for thoughts far you have taught us, thoughts far you have enlightened us. Sweet Holy Spirit, you are the teacher of the world. We ask that you teach us today again. Amen. Grant us understand that we may live. Yes, and we ask so that we shall not just be hearers alone of your word, but yes, do us Lord. also. Thank you, Lord and King, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay, so on this episode, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we are going to be looking into authority in the family and in the home. Authority in the family and in the home. Amen. Amen. The family system, as we know, is designed by God to be guided or led by a person or, you know, a gender. Usually the father, who is basically um, both biblically and socially recognized or regarded as the head of the nuclear family. Praise God. Hallelujah. When the father, when in, in the nuclear family, you have father, mother, and children. And so the authority in the nuclear family is the father, not the children, neither the mother. Amen. Amen. Authority in the home can also be conferred or assigned by the head of the family to another member of the family as he will, depending on the circumstances. So yes, the father is known to be the authority of the nuclear family, but probably in his absence or his in inability to you know exercise authority probably because he's occupied or something then he can confer authority or designate you know authority in the home to someone else however all right praise god so this session is is kind of um not what the regular okay uh it's limited to a more spiritual aspect of our family in our home amen. amen and that's what the holy spirit wants us to consider in this session all right so so definition of the word authority as given by the english dictionary uh is um, one power to influence or command thoughts power to influence or command opinion the power to influence or command behavior also authority can also be um, defined as the freedom granted by one in authority so simply put the rights that one in authority confers on others amen, amen. so therefore authority in the home or in the family is the power to influence or command thoughts opinions or behavior in the family or in our homes the power the father has this power to influence it also means the right of freedom granted by those in the position of authority in the family to carry out certain roles and duties in the home. Amen. Amen. 
so the spiritual aspect of the family we must become aware of uh, we must be awakened to and assured of as children of God, uh, as sons of God, as um, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, is that every Christian family, every Christian home, ought to possess the consciousness of the redemptive work of Christ. As we proceed, we are going to understand why. Now, Jesus Christ conquered Satan. He broke his dominion and took away his authority and Pa, amen. Amen. Um, the book of Colossians 2 and verse 10 tells us, And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. And this scripture is um, talking about Jesus. Therefore, there is no man, no angel, whoever lived, okay, or who lives now, or who can come anywhere in the future near to jesus in power in authority in glory and honor and the same power of god which raised jesus christ from the dead is to work in and for us today hallelujah praise god so our triumphant lord ascended to the right hand of majesty on high okay and laid the tokens of his victory he showed all that he did to the father to approve of our redemption Okay, at the feet of the Father, and for this reason, we were given legal rights as sons of God, as children of God. We now have legal rights to, you know, the victory Jesus won. Okay, over sin, over Satan, over sickness, and over death. Hallelujah! Praise God. Also, on this ground of the finished work of Christ, we have no excuse for spiritual dryness weakness and fertility in our homes this is where i want us to hit on today because we now have access to come boldly to the presence of our father god our sons to claim the natural rights of a child begotten in love into the family of god our access is so free that unless we decide to no one can hinder us or question our rights to approach our father right so in the nuclear family no one has better rights than the biological child in the home you know where you have um, nieces and nephews and cousins and all sorts you know visiting they don't have the same rights as the children in the home praise god hallelujah it doesn't matter who it is you can come into the place of those in the home especially when they have not been disowned <laughs> you understand yeah now as children of god we have been brought back into the family of god we have legal rights these legal rights are not um, things we have to beg for these are things that you know it's natural to us in the kingdom of god praise god hallelujah and this right is the authority that jesus has handed over to us praise the lord hallelujah we must understand that God cannot budge into our space, our family or our homes, if we don't assume our obligation as sons, giving all authority in heaven and on earth. The Apostle Paul in his prayer for the church in Ephesus mentioned the need for every believer to know some key aspects of Christ, you know. And one of these key aspects is for us to know how unlimited is the power of Christ Jesus to us who have faith in the Lord Jesus. The knowledge of how unlimited the power that Jesus possesses and he has given to us and we now have by faith in him. Hallelujah. Let's read the scripture in the book of Ephesians chapter 1. I'm going to be reading from verse 16 to 23. It says, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him it is says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints verse 19 says 
And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, word, who believe according to the work of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And I put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all and in all. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the power of Jesus is so great that it cannot be compared to any other power. The same power of God which raised Christ Jesus is at work in and for us. Through Christ Jesus, we are more than conquerors too. We can overcome the world, the flesh, the devil, and experience life and joy in our family and in our homes. If we do not, it will be because we fail to use the power available to us. So the question now is, we have authority through Christ Jesus as children of God and that also means our homes has received this authority. Our families have received this authority, you know, from Christ Jesus. In what aspect, in what ways are we meant to use this authority? In what ways are we meant to exercise this power? Pastor, in what ways can our families, our homes, exercise this authority and power that Christ Jesus has, you know, given to us? And basically, um, the, Jesus makes us understand that he has given us power over basically all the operations of the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. We have the, 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 um, there's the lion, the adder, the scorpions. Those are all things that um, Jesus gave us authority over. And if you look at them, they are all symbolic for different demonic operations mm. and principalities of mm. different kinds. Mm. And so basically... The authority that's given to us by Jesus was given to us over all of these. And as far as, as members of the family of God, uh, who are also, you know, a nuclear family, everybody must be able to exercise this power authority, and authority. Yeah, over everybody. Because um, that's the reason why, even as a father, you must teach your children, your children how to exercise mm. their spiritual authority yes. in Christ. Mm. Uh, if, you are, if you are teaching your children, that means you must also teach your wife mm. how to exercise your spiritual authority in mm. Christ. I remind you the story of a particular man of God who is born to be with the Lord. Mm. And um, man, I think the earlier part of his marital life, he, went, he used to go on um, cross gospel campaigns, crusades, and he goes alone. And there was a particular period he went, and one of the nights, the wife and the kids were at home. And that night she saw a skeleton and the skeleton was approaching her. Mm. And she said she binded all the binding she could bind and lose all the loose she could lose. Every scripture she could, she could remember. remember. Whether they applied or they did apply. She was just, she was just reciting, reciting them. Speaking. Just speaking. Declaring. Hey, <laughs> declaring and declaring. <laughs> Finally, the um, demonic spirit, mm. you know, disappeared when the husband came back from the crusade she told the husband you see this this thing you say you are doing this ministry this uh deliverance deliverance this all this all the things you say you are doing is two of us that are doing it now mm -hmm. you are not doing this alone we are together in it and she's a woman of god with a very strong anointing she had to learn it by Exp experience <laughs> you know so basically it's very important you know there are sometimes you know my daughter wakes up and she tells her, my teller, okay always say it shall not stand neither shall it come to pass mm. we have to learn how to ex we have to teach everybody in the family how to exercise authority over the serpent over the um the, the lion over the scorpion over all all the principalities and powers you know because I, i've noticed that in Christ most christian homes you know they mostly depend on one person in code that, that appears to be more spiritual. Yeah. Which is not supposed to be. No. Everyone in the home should be able to exercise authority in their different capacity. Of course. No one should be left out and no one should depend on the other. Yeah. Yes. We ought to 
you know, share fellowship and, you know, share resources, share light and the rest of it. But our Christian work, even as a family, shouldn't be dependent on, on another person. Of course. We should all yearn to grow. We should all learn and grow at our different levels. Yeah. Very yeah. important. Yeah. Very important. Like you said, the, the, the man of God, uh, the minister was not at home. The wife who had never probably exercised authority over one demon because her husband has always been around, at this time, found herself in a position where she had to, you know, <laughs> exercise authority impromptu. <laughs> yeah. Thank God, you know, she had fellowship with the Lord. The case would have been fatal. It would have been a fatal you know, one. It would have, been a fatal one. Yeah. It would have just been that the man of God returned home and his home is no more intact. Sure. Yes. Sure. Sure. So this is very, it's a very important thing for our homes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah to Jesus. So let me just give us these scriptures as um, as basis for what we're trying to see. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So this makes us understand that all power, there is none left given to Jesus. In heaven and on earth. And Luke 9 and verse 1 says, Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. This, by extension, has been given to each and every one of us followers of Christ today. And Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says, Behold, I give unto you what? Power to tread on serpents. This is the scripture pastor was mentioning. Yeah. And scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. This power has been given to us. We just have to live in this consciousness. And um, I want to also read uh, Mark 16 verse 17 to 20. It says, And this sign shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and sat at the right hand of God. And they went forth, and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them, and confirming the word with signs following. Can you, you see, he's giving us this authority, he's giving us this power. And he doesn't leave us alone. He still goes with us, confirming his word with signs following. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, faith in the name of Jesus and in utilizing the authority he had given to us is the same as Jesus walking with us and confirming his word with accompanying signs and wonders. Don't be afraid to exercise. Exercise. Jesus is there to, you know, Confirm his word. Just make sure it's the word you are declaring. You know, you are not confessing um, negativity. You are not confessing um, the situation. But confessing the word of God. If you confess the word of God, the word of God will confirm his word with signs and wonders. Amen. Amen. The scripture is fulfilled concerning Jesus and the new creation that Isaiah prophesied in um, Isaiah 8 and verse 18 when he said, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given unto me are for what signs and for wonders. So in our homes, signs and wonders is meant to be what's natural. Signs and wonders should be natural for us in our homes. And I pray that will be the other for us um, on a daily basis in Jesus' name. Amen. So Satan only has legal rights over those who are outside the family of God. Thank God we are what? In the family of God. Our families bear the name of who? Abba Father. Yeah. He, uh, we, we, we emanate from him. Our families emanate from him. And so the devil has no hold. This, Satan has no place in our homes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mark chapter 16 verse 17 says, In my name, as we read, In my name they shall cast out what? Devils. So, in our family and in our homes, we have the legal authority to cast out demons that want to force their way into our family and our homes. And how do they do this? We know that um, for, the, for the new creation, for, for children of God, the devil cannot possess us. 
Okay? But he does this through manipulation. He can through manipulation. He can through, you know, wrong attitudes and character. Yeah. He can through disobedience. So there are other means by which he can, you know, have access into our homes. We have been given the authority to break the power of devil, of, of, of Satan, over our minds, our bodies, and our spirits also. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So in our homes, we need to exercise this authority. What are you seeing that is contrary to the word of God? What are you seeing that is contrary to, you know, the will of God? What are you seeing that is contrary to God's purpose for you? Cut it out in the name of Jesus. Don't don't waste time. Don't don't give room. You know, it's it's the natural man wants to want to talk out matters. Yeah. You want to iron it out, like yeah. we say. You want to iron it out. You want to you want to you know talk it tete tete. You want to do bedroom discussion. You want to do one on one with the children. Hey, sometimes it is better. In fact, as for me, I will say every time, handle it first spiritually. Yeah. Before you start, you know, wasting time with the physical. You it will surprise you that when you handle the matter spiritually, you won't waste time physically. Of course. Doing it. The book of Second Corinthians 10 and verse 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So as children of God, we have been given weapons of war to make war, and not to make merry. This power, this authority is not for us to have fun. This power, this authority is not for us to make merry. It is for us to make war. War against the kingdom of darkness that want to invade our space. We cannot afford to be sleepy. We cannot afford to be cold. We cannot afford to be seen folding our arms. Knowing that the devil is always on the attack. He doesn't go on break. He doesn't go on vacation. And because you are a child of God, you are in the light. He's more, he's even more interested in your matter. Of course. Because he's not happy that your family is not one of those families he has kept in darkness. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't want you to enjoy that peace. He doesn't want you to enjoy that 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 you know atmosphere of signs and wonders you are enjoying. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The air, the water, the food we need and consume are even used by the devils in our times, you know, to infest and to afflict our bodies. I, I heard the other day of some fishermen who go fishing and embalming fishes that they you know catch with the um, the chemical they use to embalm dead bodies and these same fishermen don't eat the fish but they go sell it in the market hmm. is this not a way that the devil is using the food we eat to cause affliction in the lives of people hmm. you hear of people who who inject fruits so that they can ripen yeah these are different ways the devil is looking for. So he may not, he doesn't come with horns. He doesn't come afflicting with, you know, probably what you watch in the movies. No. He uses the ordinary salesperson, ordinary markets people, fishermen, hunters, and the rest of it to bring in something that you will consume and can afflict your body. Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. So we must. Cease tending more towards carnality concerning the happenings around us. What I'm saying is that we must stop accepting every little happenings with face value. Just take it as uh, one of those things. I, I learned that uh, chicken pox is in the is in the area, mm -hmm. uh, so it's not it's not it's the stop spiritual. You know, I I don't I don't I'm not comfortable who we, we'll make that statement. Don't stop spiritualizing everything. Mm -hmm. What? Who, what do you think holds this life? The physical? When you use your physical eyes to run this world as a child of God, you are really putting yourself in a position of, you know, of defeat and the devil mesmerizing you. Because those in the world are already under his grip. And then you have been given authority and you are now subjecting yourself to what those are under affliction are experiencing. That means you are you are you are you 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 have it. It's just like um, I, 
I think I remember the story of the father who gave his son a book after he graduated. A and a Bible. It was it a Bible? A Bible yeah. And then he put in the, the a khaki, khaki yeah, in Bible. the Bible. And this guy, oh, I just graduated and my dad is giving me a Bible. Yeah, just a Bible. And he just kept it on his shelf. Because his other pe um, pairs, pairs were, were spring khakis. Yes, were spring khakis. You know, and because he felt he just left the Bible and he, he never opened it until <laughs> after the dad passed on. So after the father, the father's funeral. Okay. And the father had written a will and everything. So, you know, he, because he was like, oh, he felt the pain of his father's exit. Mm. It was like about maybe 20 years or there about after or more after. And they're like, hey, what did my father even put? Let me even check that Bible my father gave me where I graduated. Mm. He never opened that. He opened it. It can't keep it. Yeah. Now, can you imagine? By that time, the car wouldn't be the latest model if at all you know the model would have been really old no, number one number two the 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 joy of the car would not be there not again. be there again because exactly. the joy was meant to be when his mates we're were riding driving it. yeah we're riding the car and you see all because the dad put it in the bible yeah so when we keep putting first the worldly things instead of you know the spiritual yeah we'll keep losing out from what we're supposed to benefit from yeah praise the lord hallelujah we should stop taking everything happening around us with face value we have to be spiritual about everything be spiritual because the enemy is always on the attack all disease is of the devil and do you know what even bad habits is from the devil of course nobody brought bad habits from heaven no <laughs> God never created anyone with bad habits. So when you see habits that are against the will of God, they are against the scriptures, you know, popping up in your home, what do you do? Do you flog? You depend on your cane. You depend on your hands. And you're talking. You depend on your screaming. Or your discipline. You will be surprised. Some, some, some talks actually grew up with disciplinarians yes. and they ended up as talks right yes. they would say oh after all you flog me so uh, i'm good to go you know all disease all bad characters bad habits they are from the devil what do you do when you when when they begin to bring up their head do you when you see when there's a disease do you run to the hospital first or you call on the name of Jesus. Or you exercise your authority in the name of Jesus. That's where we find ourselves today. Hallelujah. Praise Diseases, demons and hell knows the name of Jesus. And the power in the name of Jesus. They know Jesus. They also know our legal rights and authority as sons of God. The children of God who are not conscious of this. Or do not exercise this, their legal right and authority will suffer in ignorance. Hallelujah. So yes. you say, oh, it's just a headache. It's just a headache and you are running to the pharmacy. You don't want to open your mouth to cast out pain in the name of Jesus. I've done it severally. Severally. I feel some pain and I'm like, in the name of Jesus, I cast you out of my body. Another man lives in me. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You cannot have a place in me. I cast you out of my body now in the name of Jesus. Sometimes my daughter comes to me. When she tells me I'm feeling this pain or I'm feeling it, I say cast it out. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. My body is healthy. We have to exercise. Otherwise, in ignorance, the devil will continue to, you know, attack what belongs to us. The good health that belongs to us. The good life that belongs to us. The devil will continue to, you know, to, to steal it from us because of... Um, ignorance hallelujah praise god so the christian home and family is to manifest the heavenly family model on earth and the consciousness of our legal right and authority in us exercising this legal right and authority is what engenders our manifestation as sons of god in and through our family you cannot have a sick family we can't afford to have a sick family. We can't afford to have, you know, a family that is full of bad habits, you know, bad characters. Once with a 
uh, a servant of God the other day and uh, you know the the child came asking for an item and she was like hmm I know what she wants to go and do she just came to lie when she comes back you will see that is what I told you she went to do. you know and when the daughter came back and returned back the item she said did I not tell you she lied and I discovered that she didn't caution the child at that moment so it means that it had become an a, a habit lying had become a habit for the, the child and my question is how have you been dealing with these habits christian homes that must model the family of god you know the heaven on it um design cannot afford to overlook bad habits no we no. we should not we we cannot afford to overlook our righteousness we're back to the top subject of righteousness yeah we cannot take make compromises on righteousness sure we cannot otherwise we cannot shine the light of god through our families yeah our 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 children cannot go out there and be the light uh pastor um please help us shed more light on what i'm saying <laughs> uh, basically um the, the bottom line remains children are a reflection of their parents mm. um a fruit does not fall far from the tree okay yeah so um you cannot exercise authority over an attitude in the life of a child if the child actually took it from you mm -hmm. and you've not yet exercised authority over that in your life okay that's another thing so so as as parents yeah we are the mirror of course okay it, it reminds me the story i i heard of a particular young boy who a small boy maybe two three years old his dad always used to walk to a drinking bar mm. and so one day the father, the father would walk go to the drinking bar and come back drink and come back and so one day the father noticed that okay it was kind of like um it rained, so the ground was a little soft. So the, man, the dad walked to the drinking bar, and as he was walking, he no, he noticed his son was behind him, putting. So where he walked, his footprint was on the floor because it was a little wet. Wet. So the son was putting his little feet into every of his father's footprint, mm. following the footprint mm. where it was going to, behind the father. When the father looked back and saw his son doing that, he broke down. And that was the last time he ever went to a drinking bar. Mm. Knowing fully well that this boy will follow me. Will follow me. This place I'm going to, he will finally end up there. And if he puts his, his feet in his feet, that means he can take his cup too. Exactly. And so basically, you, when you see that sometimes parents cannot actually scold children, it's actually because the children are a reflection of who they are. Mm. They are a reflection of who they are. And they have not been able to deal with that on their own. So how can you deal with a child when you have not dealt with yourself? Mm. And the child knows. The child knows. So when you want to deal with the child, if you're not careful, you hear the child say, but I learned it from you. And you do it. You do it. So that you do it. That you do it. Mommy, you Mommy, do it. Do it. So, so why, why should I... You know, different be different why should why should i not do it so basically it rises and falls on um parenting as what the authority in the family mm. if you are a lying parent your children will lie mm. it will enter by osmosis mm. somehow it will enter it will enter and if you are cheating parents your children will cheat yeah it will somehow find its way into them yeah if you are an immoral parent your children one or two will become immoral mm. but some way to enter into them so that's why we don't we don't exercise authority over our, our lives our character our habits because we just want to but as parents we do that because of our children mm. i was talking to an uh, is a, 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 a man is older than me and i told this one i said there are some things you should not be doing at a particular time in your life i said the moment you start giving birth to children you should stop doing some things mm. that childbearing should be your deliverance mm. Yeah, it should be your deliverance. If you could not, nothing could deliver you before. Childbearing should just be your deliverance. Because if you are not delivered from this thing, if you don't exercise your spiritual authority over this thing, 
the children will take over from them. And would you? How would you feel? How would you feel seeing you? Seeing you in the little ones? Uh -huh. mm. Because you never knew how you felt doing it to yourself. Yeah. But mm. now, when you see yourself in the little ones, yeah, doing it to themselves, mm. then you now start feeling how God, our Abba Father, mm. feels seeing mm. you do that this this this, this favor and destruction destruction to yourself. Mm. Now, so basically. It begins with parenting. Take authority over characters. Take authority over habits. Take authority over things that you know that they are ruining you. Mm. So that tomorrow, because patterns will always try to raise up their head. Bloodline issues will always try to raise up their head. Tomorrow, when the devil wants to follow somewhere to bring that thing you have dealt with into the life of your child, you can base on your authority in Christ and base on the fact that that issue has been dealt with exercise authority mm. but the bottom line is that if you do not take authority in your life how can you take authority in the life of a child that's it so the the place of us being conscious of the authority that christ Jesus has given unto us first begins with individuals and then enforced in the home yeah in the family it's very very important each that's why i said each one of us must know how to exercise authority even to the little child yeah yeah Put to the little child. No one should depend on another. Many, many Christian families are standing on one leg. Why? Because the spiritual load is put on probably the father who is the man of God. Yeah. Or the mother who is the woman of God. Yeah. Or one of the sons who is a SU. Uh, yeah. You know? Ah, my ah, my son be praying for us. So I say, I go to church, be praying for us. And then they are home. Resting. Or doing their own business. You know, and then they leave one. Okay, as far as this are so if he prays, ah, God answers. If he prays, God answers. Yes. Imagine if every other person is praying and God is answering the same way, instead of putting a load on him. So this aspect of exercising our authority and and, and you know, because of our legal rights, I want us to um really, you know, we are we are we are we are securing it to. The aspect of health and habits in this session. Health and habits is very important because many people are sick. I mean, many Christians are sick. Body, mind, emotions. And they are not considering the fact that could it be because I'm not exercising? There's something I, 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 I should know and be using and I'm not doing. Because though we are Christian families, we rely more on medicine. Sure. We rely more on uh, coaches. Mm. You know, we, we really want to come back to scriptures. We really want to do it one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. You know? So it's very important for us to be conscious of this authority that's been given unto us. And also exercise our legal rights. Otherwise... The devil will keep making mess of us, even though we are children of God with, you know, rights that have been given to us uh, as, nat as natural as can be in the family of God. And, and also, something we need to also remember is that we grow in our authority. Mm. Um, just like in every um, organization, you grow in your authority ranks. Mm. So also in our spiritual, in our work with the Lord, will grow in authority. Okay. The fact that you exercise your authority and you do not see the immediate result mm -hmm. does not mean that you would never exercise your authority. And see results. Exactly. You are growing. Mm. You are growing. You are growing. The more you grow, the more you exercise your authority, the more you see results in your life. Mm. And so you don't stop because you said, okay, I exercised my authority once. And you know, it also becomes something a habit of, you know, always exercising. Yeah. You see, it, I think the, let's set it here. It's not first about the results. It's first about knowing your right and using it. Exactly. Until you use it and use it before you can start talking about results. Of course. Ah. And most of, more often we see that Christians don't use it very much. That's what I'm saying. In their family. Mm, don't use it in the family. Much. Yeah. Don't use it very much. We use it in church, yes. Uh, well, <laughs> we use it in church but in, the but in the family that's been the challenge with the christian family mm. the christian family is only it's i'll, I'll say we only exercise 
everything about our Christianity in church when we go to gather together with yeah, other believers. Exactly. But at home, at home, we run it based on something else. Mm. Something else. Something. I'm talking about authority. Yet it's the word of God is our authority. It's our authority. So if we cannot run family based on the word of God, mm. I remember I was talking to a family member, and I told the family member. The family member said something, and I quoted a verse of scripture to the family member, and the family member told me, but that does not apply to family members. Now. And I was like, I don't understand. I think I put that God born again before me. Mm. So I don't understand what you mean by it does not apply, apply to family members. So there are scriptures that apply to family members and there are scriptures that don't apply to family members. I don't get it. And this has been our greatest undoing. Mm. We run we run our church activities with the word of God and run our families with something else. Mm. So the word of God is no longer the authority in our families. And it's a great undoing great undoing the great undoing it's a great undoing because if the word of god is your authority you discover that anything that is contrary to the word of god we have to give way yes if we have to it we have to submit to the word of god mm. characters that are not in line with the word of god they will have to give way mm. habits we have to give way mm. everything everything every health issue that's not in line with the word of god we have to give way but if we don't run if we don't put our family under the authority of God's mm. word, uh, there's a lot going to, a lot of disfavor that we would um, experience in families. And I think this still rises and falls on parents making the family know that this family, we run this family on the authority of the word of God. Yeah. The word of God is our, is our constitution. Mm. And whatever it says we do, we do. Whatever the word of God says we don't do, we don't do. Yeah irrespective of your age irrespective of your position mm. are we together if the bible says uh, uh father do not um, um push your, your sons to become what angry so if as a father you are not taking your allowing the word of god be your authority and you start pushing your children keep, keep provoking them keep provoking them. the bible says do not provoke your children your son to anger mm. if you keep provoking them to anger you are going contrary to the word of god mm. and you cannot expect to see the godly family mm. that means for you as a father the word of god is not your authority because we have situations where parents we shout children obey your parents in the lord yeah i think as a, as a woman of god that said the same thing that once she was telling the children the, the bible said obey your obey, obey your parents in and the child also said but mommy the same bible said do not provoke your children. You know, so I mean, that is the right. Is a is that's using the scripture at the wrong time. Exactly, and more often than not, if you have to start using the scripture because of something you want to get, exactly, you are not you are not allowing you are not be submitting under the authority of God. Exactly, you are trying to use God, use Jesus for your selfish benefit. Exactly. And don't forget, like, you know, in every um, legal practice, there are two sides. In every matter, there are two sides. Everybody has his rights. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Why you are proving your rights as parents? The children also have their rights before God. That's it. So, if you are trying to F, use your rights to intimidate them, mm. they would enforce their rights. Not because they don't want, to, not because they want to fight you, but because they are protecting themselves. Mm. But if everybody submits to the authority of the word of God, Discover nobody would use the word for his personal That's it. and selfish benefit. Mm. Everybody would flow under the authority of God. In fact, the Apostle Paul was speaking, he said the father is the, the, the man is the head of the home and he's under Christ. Mm. And the woman is under the man. So if the man chooses rightly to be under the authority of Christ, I think everything will fall in place. Yeah. I don't need to tell you husband, uh, wife submit. Because when you say wife submit, don't forget the wife has her own legal rights to his yeah. it is husband love mm. then if two of you now gang up against his children and say obey your parents the children have their legal rights to do not what provoke your, provoke children. your children to anger so if that becomes the issue that means we are we are confused and we have turned our home to a legal a, a, a court where nobody will win. And who, who is going to judge? If who the word of God cannot instruct cannot us, cannot speak. correct us, cannot direct us, cannot put us straight. So it starts from the the, the, the man being under authority of mm. Jesus. 
be under the authority of Jesus. When you're under the authority of Jesus, authority will naturally flow. You don't need to shout. Mm. You don't need to struggle. Authority will naturally flow. And when the children watch you and see that you are under the authority of Christ, you discover that when you tell them, don't do this, because the word of God says this, mm. they will not counter you, mm. because they know you are obedient to, to the, the authority of Christ. That's it. That's it. That's it. So, um, again, no one should be left out in, the ex in, you know, in exercising our authority that has been given to us through Christ Jesus. And we should be conscious of this because only in this can we manifest, you know, the light of God through our families and our home. God bless you for listening to this session. I believe we had a good time. And I pray that our families, our homes will shine the light of Christ indeed. You know, through our uh, ability to exercise our legal rights in the kingdom of God in Jesus name. Thank you for your time. God bless you. Today, beloved, I would like to invite you to receive the Lord Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior by making this prayer of salvation along with me. Say, believing in your heart, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you came to this earth. You died for the sins of the world, cleansed the sin of those who believe in you, and resurrected from the dead. This you did because you love me. Today, I receive your love, your death, your forgiveness, and your resurrection. I renounce my sins today. I choose to make you the Lord of my life. Jesus, I choose to serve and follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, wow. Glory be to God for making this decision. And I pray that the Lord Almighty will keep you safe and secured even to the end. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. For your love gift of any amount to Grace Life Kami Podcast, kindly use any of our giving channels available. To give in dollars, send to account number 033-154-551-2013 with SWIFT code MBGHGHAC to give in CDs. You can send to Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. Account number 033-254-551-2017 or to give in Naira, sent to Ecobank Nigeria, account number 554-102-0592. Also, for further enquiries, you can call us on plus 233054594 or send us an email via Chimdi Ohahuna Ministry at gmail.com. Remain ever blessed. Beloved, thanks for listening to the full teaching. We believe you have been blessed. Please send us your praise reports. Send us your comments. We'd love to hear from you. Kindly tell others about Grace Life Komi Podcasts. Share what God is doing in your life through these teachings. God bless you richly. Amen.